Hello, I'm Nicholas Fernandez. I'm a computational scientist at the Human Immune Monitoring Center at Icon School of Medicine in Mount Sinai. And this tutorial is going to walk you through an example using Cluster Grammar 2 to visualize high dimensional spatially resolved data from a, a technique called Codex. So we're going to start off with the Cluster Grammar 2 notebooks GitHub repository. So um, you can find it under ISMMS HIMC um, organization. And if you scroll down, you'll see several examples of how to analyze different single cell data sets and different, different biological data sets. And if you go down to Notebook 6.0 Codex, uh, you, we have an example where we're analyzing spatially resolved single cell data. Um, so if you click the launch binder, it will actually go and launch a live dashboard of our data. But in the interest of time, we've already uh, spun up uh, the, a dashboard. So we can see if we look at the URL that this example is actually running on my binder. And it's using a uh, new library called um, Voila, which allows us to take a Jupyter Notebook and make a, um, a dashboard out of it. So in this example, we're looking at um, codex data from uh, Mouse Spleen, it was re recently published. Um, and we have the, the link for the paper here in the, the notebook. So if we go back to our dashboard, so this data set is, um, they're measuring 29 surface markers in single cells on the right. So, so here we've gone ahead and take, taken the um, data for these about 5,000 cells. And we're looking at um, cells as columns and uh, surface markers as rows. And both the rows and the columns have been hier hierarchically clustered, uh, which allows you to see clusters of uh, cells and uh, markers. And, um, and on the left, we have a, a complementary view of our data. Um, so we have the actual locations of these cells in a mouse spleen tissue. And they, the authors have uh, segmented the cells and um, determined cell type. And we are using the same color scheme as the authors. So we can see different cell types. So we can see these sort of um, darker cells over here as a marginal zone MPHs and yellow cells or B cells. And you can see that there's a lot of structure in the, in the spleen. So what we've done is demonstrated how we can have two complementary views of the data. So on the left here, we have the spatially resolved view. And on the right, we have the high dimensional um, marker level view. And we can immediately start to explore these data sets. And, and we've built um, uh, connections between the two views. So what this allows us to do is hover over a cell type on the um, heat map, and it will highlight that cell type in the location-based view. So here we see where our CD4 positive T cells are located. Uh, we can also find where our CD8 positive T cells are located, and we can um, do the same thing for different cell types. So if we hover over B cells, we see that those are kind of dispersed um, throughout the tissue. And uh, we can uh, then um, also find like clusters of cells that are clustering together based on marker type expression and uh, see a breakdown of uh, these clusters and um, this heat map allows you to like to zoom in and find like rare populations here like granulocytes and um, so while they are clustered very close to each other in this high dimensional space they're actually in the real world um, fairly dispersed in the actual tissue and then we've also added the ability to overlay marker level uh, expression. So if you hover over a marker, it will highlight the um, expression of that marker as the opacity of the cell. So here we're looking at CD5, and we can see that um, where a CD5 is being expressed, and it, the color indicates the cell type, so we can see which cell types are expressing CD5. And then if you hover over a related marker, a, a marker that clusters close to CD5, you see um, similar expression patterns, or like CD90, let's see. Um, yeah. So this allows us to see the relationship between marker expression in location and in a uh, cell space. And um, what's nice is if you hover over markers like CD169, you can see that this one appears to be preferentially expressed in uh, these macrophages here, these dark cells. But you also see it um, being expressed in neighboring B cells, which might indicate um, some spillover of signal. So having the ability to, to interact with this um, this data and uh, update the visual really helps us identify novel structures in our data that we wouldn't be able to, to see as, as easily. So like for instance, if we hover over CD35, we see this cluster of cells over here that's expressing that highly. And this is not necessarily apparent if we just look at the data set as a whole, we, that cluster of cells is not, doesn't really pop out. So we're working on building more um, connections and working on scaling up to large data sets. And um, we hope you enjoyed the example. Thank you.